Didn't you have long hair recently? Yeah, yeah, I chopped it off about, uh, I guess, in the last month. Why? It was so yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was, it, was, it was a fun experiment while it lasted, but, uh, you know, it's very high maintenance. So For me, for quite some time, I've been going for some Fabio hair, but my hair <laughs> just doesn't grow that way. It grows up. So I decided just to get a buzz cut recently. I've given up on my dreams. I was kind of living through 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 you and your hair, but yeah, you ruined yeah. it. I am honored and so excited to be here with Michael Connor Humphreys. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It is much appreciated. Uh, we're going to start off this interview. I'm going to ask you five quick questions. I want mm -hmm. you to answer them as quickly as possible. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. All right. These are very serious questions here. Yeah. Who, would, who would win in a fight between John Wick and James Bond? And the James Bond is Daniel Craig. Oh, probably I'd say James Bond. You know what? You're the first person who agrees with me on that. I mean, John Wick is a badass. Don't get me wrong, but he's yeah. not beating James Bond. Probably not. No, I doubt it. Well, it's like you said, it's going to be Daniel Craig, but at the same time, I'm like, James Bond's supposed to have like 60 years of fighting experience at this point. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> True that. What is your pet peeve? Something people do that you just cannot stand. Oh, God. Oh, this is always a hard one. Like, I've got plenty of them, but uh, man, you know, it's a kind of generalized, but just pettiness in general. You know, I, just, I can't stand petty, any kind of petty behavior. <laughs> What's a talent you possess uh, that most people don't know? Huh. What can I do? <laughs> uh, what can I do? Um, man. Oh, that's a hard one. You can grow long hair. Yeah, yeah. I can grow hair. My hair grows very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably be back to that length in, in no time at all. Uh, you know, I mean, I think the thing is, is because I try to like do acting, I pretty much display everything I can do at some point or another. So, you yeah. know, I mean, well, people know I was in the army. I, I'm a good, I'm, I'm a good shot, you know, ah. shooting and stuff, but I don't, I don't practice it <clears throat> very often or anything. So, but you know, that kind of stuff, hey, you know, I'm more, it's less my skills and more that I have a giant trove of, of trivia knowledge you know like like i know all the trivia knowledge in the world right that, that has no application of course so but <laughs> when it comes to actually knowing what i need to know not always <laughs> <laughs> who would you rather have as a roommate simon cowell or gordon ramsay this is almost an impossible question here oh <clears throat> gordon ramsay because he can cook you know i mean at the very least he might be yelling at me all the time to go cook good food so you know. but simon cowell would be able to quickly tell you your talents exactly that or just tell you you don't have any you know and then ruin your life so <laughs> i think i'd rather have the guy that can cook well so yeah. true so tr <laughs> how many times have you watched forrest gum just a guesstimate oh not that many times honestly like after the first couple of years after it came out i kind of stopped like watching it in general just because i already seen it you know i'd, I'd probably seen it a dozen times and since then, I think I've only watched it like probably three or four times in like the last 20 years or so, like all the way through, you know, and it's usually when people want to watch it with me. So, right. <laughs> but normally I'll see it on TV and I'll, I'll kind of just watch it for a second. And, then, you know, the thing is, is, it's a great movie, but I like I know it inside out, you know, like I know exactly what happens and all that stuff. However, I will say, though, that I still even to this day, I like to study Tom Hanks's acting in that film because it's just so good, you know, but like since I've started studying acting, you know, I've like, I like to watch and see what his cues are and all that stuff and what he's going off with. Cause I kind of, I remember the things he was saying about what he was doing sometimes. And then I can see him kind of put it into play, you know? Huh. So it's just when, when actors, a lot of time I find that when actors, even great actors, when they try to describe how they do what they do, it's very abstract. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's one of those things, like if you can do it, you can just do it. I don't know if you can really explain it all the time, yeah. But like seeing him talk about it and then seeing what he does in a film, I'm like, okay, I see, I see what he means when he says that. Have you been in touch or has Tom Hanks reached out to you in the years <laughs> since? Excuse me. Uh, no, I, I do talk to him from time to time. Uh, I didn't for a long time, but uh, about like five or six years ago, I started chatting with him again. Um, oh. I, haven't, I haven't hung out with him in person, but we keep up and, and, you know, we just occasionally communicate here and there. 
That's super cool. I, I would fangirl out. I'd probably fan. Yeah, no, he's real nice. He's, he's really cool. Actually, that's I got back in touch with him, and uh, I wasn't sure if I could even get back in touch with him or if he would ever respond because it was just by email, you know, but he, like, immediately – has just been chatting with me anytime I want to chat with him. So, oh, wow. I absolutely love that. So, at eight years old, a lot of people know this story. You attended an open casting call in Tennessee to play a young Tom Hanks, young Forrest Gump. Do you remember the moment, the specific moment that you got the role? Yeah. Well, so I went to the open call audition and uh, tried out, and it was real, it was real simple. They didn't even, I didn't even really read a scene. It was just the first time I went in, they just asked me about myself and these other kids and just had us, you know, talk. And then the next couple of weekends, I was actually reading scenes. It only took about two weeks for them to basically give me the part. Uh, I had it, well, I was trying out in Memphis and then they wanted me to go to Los Angeles and do a screen test with Robert Zemeckis. So I was like, okay, well, you're, you pretty much have it at this point, I would think, if they're sending you that far, you know? So I was thinking it was probably gonna go through at that point. And then after that trip about, I guess, a couple of days later, they did call and say, yeah, you got the part. And then it was just go, go, go. Like, you know, what, after, after that first trip to LA, everything happened very quickly. Once they said I had the part, it's like, okay, you gotta leave tomorrow and you're gonna be gone for six months or whatever, you know? Yeah. So my mom packed up and she went with me and then my dad stayed back at home and took care of my two younger sisters while we were doing all that stuff. I can't even imagine. You know, it seems like it would be so exhilarating, especially as an eight year old. But at the same time, I feel like it would be overwhelming uh, as well. Yeah, it will. Actually, it's kind of easy at eight years old. Uh, <laughs> there's a quote uh, James Cameron uh, was talking about kids in movies and was saying how like, especially a kid who's doing a movie for the first time, like to them, or children have a remarkable way of just dealing with whatever you throw at them. So at eight years old, I didn't know that the world wasn't supposed to be like that. You know, like to me, that was just normal life. So I was like, okay, you're in this movie now, you're just doing this, you're having fun, whatever. I didn't take it as seriously. Or it wasn't like such a grave thing to me like it would have been if I was an adult. If I was an adult, I probably would have been freaking out. You know, like, oh, my God, I'm in a Tom Hanks movie and everything. But at eight years old, I didn't even understand who Tom Hanks was until I actually saw him. I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen you before, you know, but like you couldn't like put this stuff in my head at that age. So I just really just took it as it came and just had fun with it, you know, and didn't it wasn't until I got older that I really started to think about it, you know, and then and then I started to psych myself out a little bit. It's like, oh man, I can't believe you did that. Now it's just really surreal. <laughs> well, it was absolutely uh, incredible. It's by far the four scump and the notebook are two of my favorite movies. It really just depends on my mood, which one I like more, but yes. I've watched them both about 827,000 times, somewhere around there. Yeah. I like the notebook too. That's a good one. That's a really good one. You uh, know what's I, weird though is that <laughs> what's funny is that I love the notebook, but like the past three girls I've dated have never seen it. And I'm like, oh, we got to watch that. You know, that's a red flag. Sure. I'm always like, you got to watch the notebook with me. You, you know? got to stay away. That's a red flag. <laughs> Everyone has watched the notebook. If, if you haven't watched the notebook, something is wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. It is a good film. It's a good film. Ryan Gosling in that scene where he's kind of like depressed or whatever, and he has that beard. And he grew this beard is like right on, like with Ryan Gosling. That's Gossin's not exactly beard. where he was. That's right. That's right. And he is, man. Yeah, he's iconic in that movie. That's, a, that's another. I love studying his acting in that film. I really respect him as an actor, you know, and like I do, I do like what he does in that film. And he just, not to mention the guys, you know, I like he's just a, a dazzling looking person, so, you know, especially in that movie. <laughs> so, so looking back, I know it has been a long time, you know, you were eight years old, but are there specific moments that you sometimes just find yourself thinking about? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I think a lot of the stuff, well, obviously, because I went on to be in the military later, uh, a lot of the like the Vietnam scenes and all that, while they were shooting those, they knew I was into that kind of stuff. So they had me on set while that was all happening. And I was like pushing buttons and blowing stuff up and all that. So uh, I think back on that and like just the fact that like I saw them film a fake war and then like I was in the military later and I'm like, all right, how does the, the film version compare to the real version? You know, so I was like thinking about that a lot of the time. But uh, also, yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, a lot of the traveling, honestly. I think that's what really sticks out to me. The people, of course, that I met were real cool, but because I was so young, I could only take it in so much, you know? Like I remember meeting all these famous people, but uh, they were just random people really, you know? 
It's, it's probably different than it would be now, but yeah, they sent me, a, I traveled a lot, uh, especially after the film came out and was real big. They sent me overseas a lot to promote it. So I was traveling around the world, you know, when I was 10 years old and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then I, and then I, you know, the most impactful thing was like how it affected my life as a kid afterwards. Like once I came back and the movie got real big and then just the way other kids reacted to me, you know, afterwards, that's what usually I end up thinking about the most. What was your life like afterwards? Um, initially, excuse me, sorry. Initially, uh, the first couple years after it came out, I was still living in the same town with kids I already knew. So like nothing really changed that much. Like, you know, they were all, they were all familiar with me and everything. It's when I moved to a new town when I was 11 and I was around new people and new kids. And the, the thing is, they only knew me as that. They knew, right. hey, they're getting Forrest Gump before they ever actually met me or anything. Right. Like so like from that point on, my teenage childhood life was like, everything was dictated by how people were going to react to that film. Not the best experience for a kid just because, you know, the social life's already difficult when you're a teenager in high school and all that, but like it, it I, you would have thought it would have made me the coolest kid in school, but it actually made me the most like awkward kid in school just oh. because I don't know. I, I probably didn't deal with it the best, you know? So, but anyways, yeah, yeah. It was, it was an interesting experience, but that's one of the things, you know, kids in movies, you know, there's, uh, you, we all hear about, you know, the, the drawbacks and the fallouts and that kind of stuff. So, you know, but yeah, I did, I did deal with that a little bit as a teenager. For sure. Got it. Got it. But the, I got the thing is, once I got, you know, these days, and then once I was in my 20s and 30s, I got more mature. Now I can, you know, cope with it way better than I could when I was like 15 years old. Oh, of course. Of course. I can totally imagine. Do you still get recognized, Dave? Because, like, just looking at you, you still look very similar to your, mm. to your eight year old self. Do you get recognized? I know during COVID, you know, I'm sure you're not out as much. Well, that was one thing about having long hair recently was that I got away with. Like no one ever, ever said, Hey, you look like the kid in Forrest Gump, but normally they do. I mean, not, not all the time. Usually somebody tells somebody else, but every now and then I do like run into a person just immediately like, I know you, you know, <laughs> usually they just say, do I know you? And I'm like, maybe, I don't do know. You? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, maybe we met before, but I don't usually tell people about that right up front. So <laughs> You had said that in Forrest Gump that you would sometimes compare uh, the, the war in the movie to real life. What was yeah. that portrayal like? What was it actually depicted accurately in some ways? For the most part, yeah. Yeah, they actually did it. From what I understand about Vietnam, they did do a pretty realistic portrayal of what happens, you know, how that worked. But as far as like the thing is, like the special effects in that film, this was back before CGI for the most part. Well, Forrest Gump did use a little bit of like green screen and all that stuff, but it's mainly um, practical effects, right? So I saw how they set up the practical effects and how they're going to make it look and all that. They did a really good job. So, yeah, I mean, it was it's it is amazingly visceral, you know, for what it is. But guys like Bob Zemeckis, yeah, like Bob Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg are like the masters creating, you know, the effect scenes. You know, they always have yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's they did a very good job with it for sure. Good. Well, that's good to know. So after high school, uh, as you've mentioned, you did enlist in the Army. Uh, I know you were in the Army for several years. Thank you for serving our country. Uh, was there a reason why, why you kind of put a halt uh, to acting? I know you kind of tinker with it. Still, you go to acting classes, but was there a specific yeah. reason? Um, well, so for the most part, well, basically, it was like I was saying, after Forrest Gump came out, it was huge, you know, so like, like I said, for, for two or three years after the film, like I, I was involved with it still. And then by the time I was like 11, 12 years old, that was the point where it was like, all right, if you're going to keep doing this, now that you've had this success, this is what, this is where you do it. And what it came down to was me flying all over the place, doing auditions and trying out for stuff, which is what you do when you're in acting, right? I was still living in Mississippi. My parents and I had to think about if we wanted to move to L.A. because if I was going to actually pursue it, that's where I needed to go. But the thing is, at 10 years old or whatever, I had no interest in living in Los Angeles, you know, because I was just a kid. You know, I just wanted to stay with my friends that I already knew and everything. And my parents weren't too keen on, you know, relocating to L.A. either. So it was like fly here, fly there, try out for this, try out for that. And you just you can't make a kid interested in doing that. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't any fun as far as I was concerned. And so basically I was like, I told him, I was like, I don't want to really, you know, I don't want to do this, this grind, this routine of like trying to get parts and stuff, you know, 
as a kid. So I kind of like left it, uh, you know, throughout my childhood and didn't pay much attention to it. And uh, by the time I was an adult and I started thinking about acting again, you know, like I just had other stuff going on. I was in the army, obviously, for a few years. And then I was in college. And it was always like, I'll get to it eventually. And I didn't get to it till like three years ago. So you know, I'm 36 now. So it's basically I went, you know, about uh, about a 20 year period, just like, you know, but you could say that maybe I was, you know, avoiding it a little bit here and there, probably, too, because of the stuff that happened when I was a kid. You know, it made me even less interested in doing it. I was like, man, I was like being famous sucks unless you're actually like rich and famous. So, you know, like you got to have the benefits to go with the fame and not just the fame. So. Absolutely. So three years ago, uh, you got back into acting. Is acting something you're still actively pursuing as of now? Yeah, it is now. It is now. So yeah, like in the past few years, uh, yeah, just in the past few years, uh, about the time I finished college and all that, <clears throat> would have you know was ready to like pursuing stuff, start pursuing stuff. I had like just random parts were popping up here and there. Um, I was in some shows like in LA and DC and some other places. Uh, people were showing interest in me and I was like, all right, so I should start pursuing this again. It's also about the same time that I started contacting Tom and people like that. Cause you know, I'm like, all right, I gotta start, you know, talking to who I need to talk to here. But, uh, yeah, just recently I've been, I've been doing acting classes for like two years. That's the thing. I never trained in acting when I was a kid. I just went mm -hmm. and did it. Uh, and it's easy enough as a kid, but once you're an adult, you have all the like insecurities of adulthood. So now it's like I kind of need the therapy, the acting class to like, you know, kind of feel like I'm OK at it again. But yeah, I've just now started to really go back into it. However, for the last year and a half, there's been no acting to do because of the pandemic. Right. right. So I had planned on jumping right into it at the beginning of 2020. But now it's just like I just got to play the waiting game until there's actually stuff to try out for it. So yeah. I, I actually really was curious about that process of delving back into acting, whether that was kind of like almost shaking the cobwebs off and, and you felt like it was kind of natural again, or just because, you know, you, you were a kid actor, you hadn't acted for some time, if it yeah. was kind of a difficult transition, but. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mainly, like I said, just uh, the older I got, the more, you know, the more insecure, I guess I would say I got as far as like trying to act and stuff, you know, it's just when you're an innocent kid, it's so easy. Right. I get older. So yeah. Plus the stuff with being in the military, like the thing is, is, is having come out of Iraq, I kind of needed some kind of therapy anyways that I was avoiding for years. And then when I started taking acting classes, I realized that, Hey, they're like the same thing. Like acting class is the same kind of therapy, <clears throat> excuse me, that they give you for like PTSD. It's basically the same thing, to be honest, right? So I've actually found that they go hand in hand very well. And like stuff that I've learned from other adult experiences play into it and all that helped me. But yeah, now it was tough at first, but now it's it's just, it feels easier, you know, like I've kind of loosened up and everything in the last year or so. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it seems pretty easy now. It's just like I so said, I got to like actually implement it in something. I got to use it somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know what? The world is opening back up. You know, these vaccines are becoming more accessible. I cannot wait to see you on the big screen. I feel like I'm going to see you on one of these TV shows or movies. I'm going to do a back. I'm going to be like, yeah. I know that guy. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Yeah. I'll see how it goes. But yeah. I'm going I'm to get it on all and see if I can make something happen with it. Uh, well, you'll do great. The best is yet to come for you. So I, I read that you were, were teaching. You worked as a security guard for a while. I know you're doing acting classes now. What has life been like for you uh, recently during the uh, pandemic times? Yeah, well, like I moved to Portland in 2017 and uh, I moved to Portland and my first job was I did security. I was like a transit cop, basically, mm -hmm. uh, in Portland. So, you know, yeah, doing security on the buses and trains and all that kind of stuff, which was an interesting that that's not something I ever planned on doing, but I just kind of fell into that job. Obviously, they like ex-military people is how I ended up in that, you know. Did that for a couple of years was a good way to learn the town and meet people, you know, and then uh, and then, yeah, I started teaching online. Uh, and yeah, I mainly teach students in Asia uh, over it. And of course, they're on the opposite schedule. So it's always a graveyard shift. So right. I've been doing like the vampire lifestyle thing for like a year and a half now, you know, <laughs> which uh, it's OK. It, it, I, I enjoy working with the kids. I don't know how much I like working at night and sleeping all day, you know. So, but yeah, a lot of people have done it before. You know what I'm talking about. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, I do that now as far as work goes. And then, yeah, uh, 
just, yeah, since the pandemic's been happening, there hasn't been much else to do except just work, you know, and that's basically what I've been doing. And then, you know, continuing to do acting classes and stuff in the process. So it's actually, you know, it's probably not a bad thing, like having another year of acting class before I actually tried doing stuff probably is a good thing. So, you know, it probably worked out for the best, I would say. We'll see. Hopefully it does for everybody. Dude, everything happens for a reason. More practice, the better. It's not like more practice can hurt. No, not at all. 